Why must the world remain vigilant of nations, especially nations with authoritarian governments, that feel they have the right to forcefully furlough or shut down the existence of another country and its people, just because they think that they have absolute historical, cultural, and even ownership to the other sovereign nation that already has its own political and mature governmental system? Welcome to Four Seas One Family. People of the world indeed share some common ancestry. However, this doesn't mean that we are property or belong to one another, nor does it mean that we are obligated or should be forced to be subservient to any person, group, political party, or government. Our unique circumstance within our environments causes us to develop uniqueness that is observable in our reflected languages, cultures, and appearances. Our identity in all cases is reflected in the way we choose to organize and interact with fellow members of our communities. All across history, it is easy to observe the countless number of times people living under their system of beliefs and governments coming under attack, in most cases from larger and much more powerful nations that were obsessed with annexing them to the hub being just because these attackers came to the conclusion that they have unquestionable, inalienable, or sole proprietorship, soil trend, over the land or the nation of people that at one time in history may have pledged allegiance to it or offered tributes to it without being officially a sanctioned part of their nation. People living in their own nation must be allowed to grow into their way of existence without fearing having their development derailed forcefully by any other nation, no matter how powerful or influential that country and its government may be. Now, what would happen if governments and even ruthless individuals were allowed to forcefully use their prestige and financial leverage as weapons to infringe upon the rights of people in other nations who just happen to be living out their lives peacefully? If this is allowed... Not one single person in this world would be able to live their life to the fullest and just become hostages to nations and leaders that would be more than willing to imprison, abuse, and sacrifice them. Therefore, Taiwan and other independent nations must work together with their allies and remain vigilant of nations with governments that have manufactured cultural and political claims or who are just hell-bent on forcing smaller, self-supporting independent nations into submission. Russia's recent incursion into Ukraine has highlighted how larger nations with authoritarian governments are in a land grab to forcefully absorb adjacent countries that are or in some way historically and culturally connected to them, and in some cases without having any prior stewardship over the nation. The term that comes to mind that describes the desire of larger nations and more powerful nations, especially those that are under stress, to claim territorial ownership over an independent land or country is called irredentism. Now, irredentism is a political movement that describes actions to occupy and take over the land and government of an adjacent nation with close cultural and historical ties, which is most of the time camouflaged under the pretext of reunification. Irredentism carries an element of imperialism and is nearly always rooted in the concept of cultural, historical, or even linguistical commonalities and physical boundaries. However, we don't have to look too far back in history to find out how many authoritarian nations attempted to directly or subversively take over the lands of their adjacent nations that had, well, cultural and historical ties to them under the pretense of choice. Irredentism hypes the land claims that one nation has manufactured related to any past cultural, historical, or ownership of the land in question, and even governorship over its people. And this is the situation Taiwan finds itself in today. The current government of China has never had ownership of Taiwan. 
Now, if you go deep into who, what, and which nations did have at least something close to ownership of Taiwan, it wouldn't even include a Chinese dynasty. Even during its peak, the Mongolian conquerors conquered lands from Vienna in the west to Korea in the east and didn't even incorporate Taiwan into its sphere of influence. Hmm. Now, keep in mind that the Yuan dynasty wasn't even a Chinese dynasty, and the makeup of the Qing dynasty was not ethnically Han Chinese, but of the northern Manchu invaders that did control Taiwan from 1683 to 1895. Now, if any nation is said to have at least some form of ownership over Taiwan, that would be Japan until it surrendered its sovereignty over Taiwan in 1952 and after signing the San Francisco Peace Treaty, which officially ended World War II. Taiwan's hegemonic neighbor, China, is hell-bent on toppling Taiwan at all levels, and the world must not remain blind to this revanchalism. The leadership of the neighbors to the West have made it their manifest destiny to proclaim that Taiwan is an inseparable part of their nation when it has never been a part of their nation under their governance or control. Now, Chinese dynasties and emperors may have been given tributes from people in Taiwan to warn off being subjugated to attacks, but this is far from being owned by an emperor of China or wanting to be a victim of a takeover or involuntary occupation. It would just take one miscalculation from an air incursion to create an excuse for China to flip the switch for a cascading invasion of Taiwan. Now, obviously, the government to the West is looking for an opportunity to display a hostile attribution bias, which is when one subject manufactures behaviors or circumstances that creates a situation that can be interpreted as aggression and could be used as a reason to escalate their aggression or attack of, in this case, Taiwan. What would happen if Russia now claimed or tried to reclaim Alaska from the United States? Remember that the continents of the world were connected at one time. So the truth is we all belong to one entity. That entity is called humanity. If you found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before Seas One family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.